Hello, in this tutorial we're going to be creating a three dimensional sign using Arcam Express or Arcam Insignia by using different types of toolpaths. As you can see the version that I'm using is Arcam Insignia. I'll point out any differences to Arcam Express as we go along. So here you can see I've opened up my village in art file and what I'm going to do is to switch to the 3D view I can either do that by clicking on the tab here or I can press the F3 key so here you can see we have a texture already applied to this relief if I want to turn on the toolpaths as you can see here I have toolpaths on the right hand side within the project tree and we have this plus sign here to open up the toolpath tree. If I select that, that will show me all of the toolpaths that have been created for this particular part. Now, if I were to select the light bulb on the far right hand side, it would show all of the toolpaths that are being generated for this part. If I want to turn that off and just show specific toolpaths, I could do that by just selecting that particular toolpath's light bulb. So let's say for instance I just wish to see the last bit of V-bit carving. I could just turn on that toolpath and here you can see it's just the toolpath that says Art Cam. So I'm going to turn that off and turn all of the toolpaths back on. And what I'm going to do is to simulate each of these these toolpaths in turn. So the way that I can do that is to right click on the machine relief and then click simulate toolpath. Now because this is Arcam Insignia it's asking me what resolution I'd like to create this simulation at. Now in Arcam Express you will not have this option it's a fixed resolution for the simulation. So here it's simulating the machine relief toolpath that we've created so we've just got a finishing toolpath in there and you can see it's just created all of this texture on the back of the sign. I'm going to go along and simulate each of these toolpaths now so I'm going to right click on VBit carving simulate toolpath I'll just zoom in so you can see and there you can see it's just doing a bit of V-bit carving around the edges of the text. I'm going to right click on profile and simulate that toolpath. So there you can see that that's simulated that toolpath. And I'm going to right click on the V-bit carving and simulate the toolpath. So that's our finished piece. Now if I wanted to change the material of this, what I need to do is to select the simulation within the project tree and down at the bottom here below the splitter bar you can see we have material and at the moment it's set to simulation default. So if I select that arrow it gives me a flyout menu with all the materials that I can select. So I'm going to choose medium oak horizontal. Now I need to select apply for this to be applied to this particular simulation. So as soon as I select that you can see that it's changed the material to medium oak. Okay so what we're going to be doing now is to create all of these toolpaths ourselves. So the first thing that we need to do is to delete all of the toolpaths and delete the simulation. So we can do that by selecting the machine relief toolpath and then selecting the delete toolpath and then click yes. So that's deleted that machine relief toolpath. I'll do the same for the V-bit carving and do the same for the profile and then do the same for the last bit of V-bit carving. So that's deleted all of the toolpaths. If I want to delete the simulation just right click on the simulation and then select delete and that will delete the simulation so all that we should be left with now is this pebbled surface or this pebbled texture that we have on the screen 
for this particular relief. So I'm going to go to the 2D view now. So you can press F2 on the keyboard or select this tab here. And here you can see all of the vector artwork for this particular piece. And what I'm going to do is select the third vector in from the outermost vector. So I'm going to select that one there. You can see it's turned to purple. So if I just zoom in so you can see which one. So it's that one there in the center of these two vectors. It's purple because it has been grouped with other vectors. So what we're going to do is to make sure that toolpath is selected. We'll open up all of the toolpaths down the bottom right and we're going to create a machine relief toolpath which will open up a new dialog box and we don't want to do this over the whole of the relief because that would machine all of this sheet. We just want to do it within the selected vectors to act as a boundary. So we're going to change that to selected vectors. Want to make sure that it's set to inside vector because obviously we want this to be inside the vector rather than outside the vector. For the finishing options, I'm going to choose a three millimeter ball nose cutter click select. I'm going to make sure that the clearance strategy is set to raster so it's going to come across in X and then step over in Y and then come back across in X. The angle is set to 0. Tolerance I'll leave that at 0 0.01. The allowance set to 0 again so it's going to machine it to the exact size. The roughing options, I'm not going to use any roughing options for this because it's not really that deep so I can just go straight in with the finishing cutter. I'm going to make sure that the save Z and the home Z are set to 10. If I wanted to change that just click on the arrow key and then just type in 10 and 10. The material thickness, just click on the arrow and then select setup just move that so you can see so here you can see the material thickness automatically worked out at 15 and the material Z0 is set to the top and the model position in material is set to top also so keep those as I have them on the screen and then click OK I can now go ahead and calculate this toolpath so there you can see it's calculating the finishing toolpath. Now if I were to close this now, so I'll just close the machine relief dialog and then just switch to the 3D view. And I'll either click the tab or press F3 on the keyboard and you can see that it's created the toolpaths here in red. If I wish to rotate this round like I've just done, just press the middle scroller mouse button keep it pressed down and then start moving the mouse around and it will dynamically rotate the part for you. If you want to zoom in likewise use the middle mouse scroller and it will zoom in on the area wherever your mouse is pointing at so it will zoom in there. These options are also available here under the zoom just left click and you have the zoom commands there. So we're just going to simulate just this particular toolpath now. So I'm going to right click on the machine relief within the project tree and click simulate toolpath. And this will give me a simulation of just that particular toolpath, the machine relief. So there you can see it's created all of that nice texture for me. So we're going to carry on and create the rest of the toolpaths now. So I'm going to switch back to the 2D view. And what we're going to be doing now is if you have this middle vector still selected, to deselect it, just click on the white area of the screen and then it will just deselect that particular vector. 
And what we're going to be doing now is if I just zoom in on the V, I'm going to select the innermost vector there. So I need to select the inner vector there. Again, this is already being grouped with other vectors. That's why it is in purple. And we're going to be creating some V-bit carving for this. So make sure that your tool paths are selected within the project tray. And then we're going to create V-bit carving tool path. Make sure that selected vectors in the vector association is switched on. The start depth is set to zero. And what we're going to be doing is limiting the V-bit to a specific depth. So what we're going to do is turn that on and we're going to set this to a maximum depth of 10 millimeters. The tolerance looks fine, 0.01 millimeters. For the carving tool, if you click to select there, that will open up the tool database. And then come down, we're going to choose 32 millimeter, 90 degree V-bit. Now I can select that and click select, or I could just double click on that and it will select it within the dialog box for the V-bit carving. If I wish to know the maximum width or maximum depth of cut, I can click refresh here. So there you can see the maximum depth is 9.863. I could use a roughing tool if this was a really large piece, but I'm not going to do that. The save Z, need to make sure that that's set to 10 and the home Z set to 10. The material thickness is already set up from when we created the machine relief, so that should be fine. So I'm just going to click calculate now. And there you can see it's calculated all of the VBIT carving toolpath for me. Now I'm going to switch back to the 3D view. Here you can see all of the toolpaths that have been created. And I'm going to just simulate just the VBIT carving as I've already simulated the machine relief. So if I right click on VB carving and then select simulate toolpath, this will give me a simulation of that VB carving. In the third toolpath, what we're going to be doing is creating a profile of the boundary of the sign. So if we go back to the 2D view, here you can see at the moment we've got all of these red toolpaths on and they are getting in the way a little bit. If we want to turn those off, if we just select the light bulbs here and that will turn all of those off. I can switch them on or off by selecting the light bulbs. Now the light bulbs on the left are for the 2D view. If I go back to the 3D view, the light bulbs on the right, the solid light bulbs, are for the 3D view. So there you can see that it turns them on or off. So I'm going to select the outermost vector which is there. You'll see that it's turned a magenta colour. Now anything that is magenta means that it's ungrouped. Anything that is purple means that it is grouped with other objects. So previously we had a few purple vectors which meant that they were groups with other vectors. So make sure that toolpaths is selected within the project tree and then we're going to create a profile toolpath which will open up a new dialog box. Make sure that outside is selected for the profile. You can also do it inside or along but we don't want to do that for this particular piece and we want to make sure that selected vectors is selected and also make sure that this outside vector is selected and is magenta. The allowance is going to be zero so I'm not going to leave anything on here. Make sure that the final pass thickness and allowance is not selected. The start depth is going to be zero. The finish depth is going to be the size of the material which is 15 millimeters. The tolerance is fine leave that at 0.01 and the profiling tool I'm going to use the largest cutter that I have which is a 12 millimeter end mill select that I'm going to leave the save Z set to 10 and the home Z set to 10 and I'm going to click calculate now so there you can see in red the toolpath along the outside 
So I can now close the profiling toolpath. And before I simulate this, I'm just going to show you how to add bridges within ArtCam Insignia. So if I just open up the profile by selecting the plus sign next to profile in the project tree, just select the 12 millimeter end mill and the bridges are located here. So we want to keep the part within the material. Select the profile options and I'm just going to create one bridge and I'm going to put this on the start point and the bridge length let's make this let's say 10 millimeters and the thickness is going to be 3 millimeters so if I click create bridges here you can see it's created the bridge for me here now the other thing that you can do within ArtCam Insignia is actually move the bridges so if I just zoom in and just grab that bridge and I can just move that to an area which will be easier to be sorted out once the part has been broken from the material. So once I've finished with that just press escape and there you can see it's left a bridge in there. So now I can simulate the profile. So if I go to the 3D view and I'm going to right click on the profile and then simulate the profile. Here you can see it's cut the part out and it's left my little bridge where I specified on the bottom left hand corner. Finally we're going to create the last bit of VBIT carving for the ArtCam text. So if we go back to the 2D view, I can turn off the profile if I wished so I don't see the toolpath of that. And let's select anywhere on the ArtCam, let's say select the C. You can see that this is all grouped because it's purple. Go back to the toolpaths within the project tree. So I'll go back to all of my toolpaths on the bottom right and I'm going to create a VBIT carving toolpath which opens up a new dialog box again and make sure that I have selected vectors switched on. I'm not going to limit the tool to a maximum depth this time and I'm going to select a carving tool. Let's choose the 32mm 90 degree. I can click refresh if I want to know the maximum depth and width so it's going to cut it and all of the options should be the same as previously save Z and home Z at 10 and the material thickness should not need looking at. So if you click calculate now and you can see that that's created a VBIT carving one for me. So if we go back to the 3D view right click on VBIT carving one and simulate the toolpath. Now you can see that it's added this art cam to the sign.